I'm excited about the next couple of weeks. Today, we will talk about the beginning of Jesus' ministry and those first three years. You say, but wait, he ministered three and a half years. That's right. Today, we'll talk about the first three years. Next week, we'll talk about the, the, the last six months, the other half a year. The last six months of Jesus' earthly ministry. And then, we'll talk about the last six days and the last six hours on Palm Sunday. The last six days, the last six hours. The last six days when he rode into Jerusalem and he had one more week with all the beatings and the scourgings and the false trials uh, and, and uh, the crown of thorns, that whole week, and then the last six hours which were on the cross. Amen. All that will be covered on Palm Sunday. Amen. Thank God the church had some resources. We were able to order some communion. And on Palm Sunday, as we remember the body and the blood, We'll have communion. Amen? Amen. 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 And then, Sunday, Easter, the Resurrection Sunday, and we will celebrate, uh, just like we do every week, the Resurrection. That is why we worship on Sunday, even though Saturday is the religious Sabbath, it's the seventh day of the week. The first church in the book of Acts, they started worshiping on Sunday to celebrate the day that Jesus rose from the dead. And when Jesus died on the cross, he fulfilled the law. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? And so no longer is the Sabbath a day of the week. Now our rest is found in a person called Jesus Christ. It's not found in a day of the week. So tomorrow is also your Sabbath. And Tuesday will also be your Sabbath. And the rest of the week will be your Sabbath because of, not the day of the week, but because of who you rest in. In whom you find rest. Amen? Amen. So today, the beginning of Jesus' earthly ministry, the first three years, we're going to look at Mark chapters 1 through 7. Wow, all seven chapters? Yes, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just touch on some areas. Let's go to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. And if you'll stay with me while we read Mark chapter 1, this will set the foundation for the next four weeks. Amen? Amen. Are we together? Yes. Amen. 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 Well, then let's, let's read it together. I will read it. You can follow along. Mark chapter 1, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him, verse 5, all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. Amen. Verse 6, And John was clothed with camel's hair. They say John was a real sight. He ate locusts. He ate weird things. He wore camel's hair. He was just a, a mess, a spectacle. Amen? Amen. And, uh, John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of a skin about his loins, and he did eat locusts and wild honey, <clears throat> and preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I, 
after me. The latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Verse 9, And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in the Jordan River. Verse 10, And straightway coming out of the water, he saw the heavens open. Can you imagine what that looked like? And the Spirit, like a dove, descending upon him. That's why the dove, you see a lot of that in churches, symbolizing the Holy Spirit. That's why, right there. A spirit like a dove descending upon him. So John was baptizing, and he said, there's going to be somebody greater than me. I'm not even worthy to untie his shoes. And then comes Jesus out of Nazareth and gets baptized by John. And then the Holy Spirit descends upon Jesus like a dove. Amen. And then a voice, verse 11, and there came a voice from heaven, saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Verse 12, and immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. Wow. See what's happening. Jesus just got baptized. Just got baptized, had a glorious moment, and now the Spirit of God is leading him into the wilderness. What happens there? And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts and angels ministered unto him. Now after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Verse 16. Now as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon. Okay, this is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. What's the first thing he did? He got baptized. What's the next thing he did? 40 days in the wilderness. Fasting. 40 days. No food, no water. The angels ministered to him for 40 days. Now he starts to call his disciples. Verse 16, now as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. We know how they made their money, right? They had boats, they had nets, they caught fish, right? So they made money, they had a job, right? A career. And Jesus said unto them, verse 17, come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And with great hesitation, no, 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 verse 18, and straightway, immediately, without hesitation, Amen. they forsook their nets. They sacrificed their living, their boats, their nets, their careers. They forsook their nets and followed him. That's humility. Without excuse. But I, but I just bought this net. It's a brand new net. Oh, you know how much? I even had to pay tax on it. It's a brand new net. Oh, and my boat, I just got it repaired. I'm walking away from all that. No, nope. straight away without hesitation. Hallelujah. They followed him. Verse 19. And when he had gone a little further, thence he saw James, the son of Zebedee. Now he's still calling disciples. Amen? Yes. And John, his brother, who also were in the ship, mending their nets. Okay, they hadn't gotten their check yet. Okay, so they had to fix what they had. Okay, mending their nets. And straight away he called them. And they left their father, Zebedee, in the ship with the hired servants. What? They were not poor. They were not broke. It wasn't easy for them. When you're broke and have nothing, it's easy to walk away from it and follow Christ. You're not leaving anything. These people had their father there in the boat. And they owned the boat. And they had servants. Verse 19, they left all that and went after him. Amen. 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 Verse 21, and they went into Capernaum. And straight away on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue 
and he taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. Authority is different than position. Authority is different than position. The scribes had position, so people were quiet while they spoke because of their position. But Jesus spoke with authority. Amen? Amen? Amen. That's what happens when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. There's evidence in the scriptures. It talks about being filled with the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, and you speak boldly. That's one of the evidences of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Verse 23, And there was in their synagogue a man with an un clean spirit and he cried out saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou Jesus uh, of Nazareth art thou come to destroy us I know thee who thou art the holy one of God that's why we're careful not to just call ourselves believers because even demons believe but they don't follow so you'll see often when I put a post to the church, I say something about uh, believers and followers of Jesus Christ. Because even the demons believe. Amen? Are we together? That's right. Yeah. So these demons cry out, what do, we, what do we have to do with you? We know who you are, the Holy One of God. Verse 25. Jesus rebuked him. Jesus rebuked him. There are many, many scriptures, church, mm -hmm. that talk about Jesus rebuking and God rebuking. Okay? And he's never left us. He'll never forsake us. When we go out and minister, he's with us. So we should ask God to rebuke evil spirits. That's right. Amen. Rather than us trying to take authority over created angelic beings. Let God do the rebuking. Jesus rebuked him and said, hold your peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed. Verse 27, in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. Yeah. Just uh, show you something, church. There was no social media back in those days. No social media. No billboards. Just word of mouth. Word of mouth. Let me encourage you, church. Stop waiting for church, for Cross Life to have a spot on the radio, a spot on the TV, enough money for a billboard. Amen. It needs to come from you. Yes. Word needs to spread from you. That's how it happened here. Immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. Just word of mouth. Have you told anybody about your church lately? Have you invited anybody to your church lately? Keep it up. Keep it up. Don't be discouraged. Keep it up. Verse 29. And forthwith, when they were come out of the, sea, uh, out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother, that's Simon's mother-in-law, lay sick of a fever. And Enon, meaning immediately, suddenly, without hesitation, they tell him of her. In other words, we're here in my house, but my mother-in-law's in the other room, and she is, uh, she is sick. She's not well. And he came and took her by the hand, amen, and lifted her up. And immediately, hallelujah, the fever left her. Thank you, Lord. And she ministered unto them. What? Immediately when she was healed, she started serving them. She came up out of that bed and said, 
Let, let me heat some water. Let me make some porridge. Let me make some bread real Amen. quickly. Amen. Let me let me get some some meat. Let me let me serve you. Let me serve you immediately. She redeemed the time. So many people when they're healed, they take off on vacation. Woo! I went through it. I'm taking a break. <laughs> Not her. She lay sick for who knows how long. Jesus healed her and she began to serve. She began to serve. For in him we live and move and have our very, very being. Yes. It all comes yes. from him. It all belongs to him. Say amen. Yes. Are we together, church? Yes. Yes. Amen. Immediately she began to minister unto them. Verse 32. Remember, this is all the beginning of the ministry. He's calling disciples. He's already starting to heal, cast out demons. Verse 32. And at even, evening time, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. Wow, what a scene that must have been. Yes. Late at night, some fire is burning for some light and some heat. Here comes all the sick and some demon possessed. And all the city was gathered together at the door. Wow. Wow. The house was packed. People standing outside. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases. He healed many. Church, understand this. Not everybody was healed. He healed many. Not everybody got healed. And he cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. Verse 35. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day. Any of you ever get up at three in the morning? Mm -hmm. Four in the morning? Yeah. That's what he did. He rose up uh, a great while before day. And he went out and departed into a solitary place. And there, what did he do? Pray. Verse 36. And Simon, after, uh, and Simon and they that were with him followed after him. Amen. Verse 37. And when they had found him, <laughs> they said unto him, All men seek for thee. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there. For therefore came I forth. In other words, Jesus could have spent his entire ministry in one city. Three and a half years, if he wanted to. Because there's always going to be sick people. There's always going to be people that need something. But he had to move on. He left witnesses there, right? Those people that were healed and delivered, yes, yes. those are his witnesses. Right. Now let me move on, okay? That's what he said. Verse 39, he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. This is still the beginning of his ministry. Verse 40, And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt. Not if you are able. If thou wilt. If you will, Amen. thou canst make me clean. Can you imagine the desperation of that leper? Oh, church, we need to put ourselves in each other's shoes once in a while. Amen. Having leprosy was a really, really bad thing back then. You were unclean. You were cast out. You couldn't do any business because nobody wanted to deal with you. He comes to Jesus in desperation. It's just words on a page right here, but can you imagine if you were that leper? If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus, moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him. What? He touched him? He didn't put on a mask and rubber gloves. Mm. <laughs> he touched him and said unto him, I will, I will, be thou clean. Verse 42. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. Verse 43, and he straightly charged him and, uh, and forthwith sent him away. Every time it says charged him, Jesus is telling these people, shh, don't tell anybody what I just did. Just go and let them see for themselves. 
He charges constantly. We're going to see him charging people not to say anything. And they all disobey him. <laughs> they can't keep their mouth closed. They've got a witness. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. Oh, I'm going to praise his name. Everybody he charged, he, they went and said something anyway. He went, Can you keep a secret? Yes, Jesus. And then they did. Okay, They had to go tell somebody. Verse 44. And saith unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way. Show thyself to the priests, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Amen. Don't you think if you've been blessed, you should come to the house of God and give a blessing yeah. as a testimony? Yeah. Not just standing there and witnessing, but say, God has given me another day to prosper. Another day to make wealth. Let me bless yes. the house of God. Let me bless the one who blesses me constantly. Yes. Verse 45. But, even though Jesus said, don't tell anybody. Verse 45. But he went out and began to publish it <laughs> much. And to blaze abroad the matter. In so much that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city. This guy blew Jesus' cover. So Jesus had to leave. Jesus told him, go, just show yourself to the priest and give an offering. But this guy went into the streets and started telling everybody what Jesus did. And Jesus was like, oh, I'm out. I'm out of here. I got to go. This guy blew my cover. Amen? Amen. Amen. That guy could not stop from testifying. So Jesus had to leave. <laughs> he said, well, I guess I'll go home now. Right? Jesus had to leave. Jesus called uh, and so much that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in desert places. And they came to him from every quarter. All right, that's the beginning of the ministry, setting the foundation for the next four weeks. You see what happened? He was first, what? Baptized. Came out of the water. Where did he go straight from there? The wilderness, the desert for 40 days. Fasting, no food, no water, and constantly being tempted by Satan. Amen. Then he left there and started calling his disciples. And they left, left their livelihood, left their money, left their savings, their 401k, walked away from their parents, their fathers, their new boats, their nets, and followed Jesus. Amen. Amen. And did miracles. Amen. Uh, and so that's the beginning of the ministry. That's all of Mark chapter 1. Amen. Thank you, Brother Michael, for having that up there. Amen. Now we're going to cover smaller portions. Let's look at Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 15. Uh, this is where Jesus heals the paralyzed man, okay, uh, who had to be let down through the roof of the house. Why? Because the house was full. And some that were in the house should not have even been there. Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 15. Okay, verse 4. Look at verse 4. They could not come near Jesus in the house because of the press. I think that's kind of funny. I don't think it means CBS, ABC, NBC, and MSNBC. But they were in the house. People that should not have been in the house. Fake news was there. CNN was in the house. MSNBC, ABC was in the house. You'll read about it. Verses 6 and 7. Mark chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. See if I am wrong. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Verse 7. Why does this man thus speak blasphemy? Who can forgive sin but God only? You see? They had to let this man who was paralyzed in through the roof because the house was, had people in it who didn't need to be in there. Scoffers, fake news, false reporters who were going to twist the story to try to make Jesus look bad. If they hadn't been in the house, they could have come right in and brought the paralyzed man to Jesus. But they couldn't because scoffers were in the house. Remember this paralyzed man, okay? Remember him, because I'm going to bring him up. 
Uh, he's important because he's going to show up later on when Jesus comes riding into Jerusalem uh, in a few months. Remember the paralyzed man, will you? Yes. Amen. Let's look at chapter 3. Just a couple of verses. Verse 31 through 35. This is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Remember this? Okay. Mark chapter 3, verse 31 through 35. There came then his brethren and his mother. So Jesus is teaching, and his mother shows up, and some of his brothers. Okay? Uh, verse 32. And the multitude sat about Jesus, or around him. And they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without, uh, uh, without seek for thee. So they're like, hey, uh, Jesus, your mom just got here. Your mom just got, that's happened to me before. I've been in the middle of something and somebody says, your mom just got here. Oh, great. Okay. I'm glad to know that. Okay. And there's been churches and other places where I've ministered and I've told them, uh, church, I have my phone here and I won't answer it. It's on silent unless my mom calls because my mom knows that I'm here today with you ministering. And the only reason she would possibly call is if it were an emergency. emergency. So if she calls, I'm going to take that call because it will be an emergency. Otherwise, she won't be calling. You see, it's normal for somebody to tell Jesus, your mom just got here and your brothers are here. Oh, but what does Jesus say? <laughs> Verse 33, he answered them and said, who is my mother or my brethren? And he looked around, just like I'm doing right now, at those that sat in front of him. And he said, behold, my mother and my brethren. Verse 35, for whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister Amen. and my mother. Look around, church. You're surrounded by brothers, sisters, mother. Brothers and sisters, amen, in Christ. This is your family. And anyone else that you will meet in the future that God will bring to cross life who wants to do the will of God, that's your family. Amen. That's your family. That's right. We often put our blood family first, and a lot of times our family has wants nothing to do with God. Mm, and we true. forsake our real family that God says is our family. Those who do the will of God, that's our family. And we'll often forsake our real family to do something for our other family who doesn't want anything to do with God. Again, this is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Amen? Have we already learned a little bit today? Or been reminded of a little bit? Yeah. So, he gets baptized. He goes into the wilderness for 40 days. Then he starts to call disciples. He begins healing. Are we together? Yeah. Healing and casting out demons. Amen? And then he tells everybody, I know you think that's my mother and my brethren, but hey, for me, whoever does the will of God, that's my family. Hallelujah. That's my family. Hallelujah. Amen? Hallelujah. That's my family. Amen. Some of you might be all alone in Dallas, Texas, and I say to you, you're not alone. You have a family. Amen? Sister Carol's relatives are in Ohio, those who are still among the living. Amen? amen. Sister Carol, amen? Where's your family? In Ohio. No, where's your family? Right here. Here. Right, here. right here. Right here. This Praise is your family. Amen. Glory Amen. I speak from experience. I've got tons of cousins and aunts and uncles living outside uh, of, of Texas. But my family's here. That's right. My family's here. We got it? Yes. Are we together? All right, then let's move on. Mark chapter 4. You see how fast we're moving along? Amen. Amen. You thought we were going to read all seven chapters, didn't you? <laughs> Mark chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. What happens here? This is the parable of the sower. The seed is always good. Say that, church. The seed is always good. It's the ground that may not be good. The seed is always good. So in verse 14, Mark chapter 4, verse 14, the Bible says that the word of God, the Holy Bible, that is the seed that we are sowing into the lives of men women, and children. And that seed, hallelujah, is perfect. Say amen. 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 Here's what it says. The sower soweth the word. 
Amen. That's our seed. That's right. And it's perfect. So if the seed is not bearing any fruit, is it the seed or is it the ground? The ground. It's the ground. The ground. That's right. It's the ground. So then look at verses 14 through 23. Jesus explains that the heart of mankind is like the ground that receives the seed of the word of God. Mark chapter 4, verses 14 through 23. Uh, just read a little bit of it. Verse 15. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard it, Satan comes and immediately taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Amen? That's happened. There was a young man who got saved uh, outside of the church. I led him to Christ. He started coming to the church. But then Satan crept in and he started listening to uh, YouTube preachers and started listening to other religions and started comparing and questioning. The problem is he was never satisfied with the answers because the enemy came in and tried to steal the seed. Now, he is born again. I'll see him in heaven. Hopefully, we'll see him here again someday. That's right. But Satan does come in and try to steal the seed That's right. so that he'll bear no fruit. And these are they, verse 16, likewise, verse 16, which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root. So some people receive with gladness. They'll shout amen. Amen. amen but it never gets down into the root. Okay? Uh, have no root in themselves. So endure for a time. They're only around for a little while. Mm -hmm. And then you never see them again. Because immediately they're offended. Okay? So I'm not going to read any more of that. But you see what's happening. This is the parable of the sower. And the seed is the word of God. That's right. And it's perfect. Amen. Don't stop sowing it. Amen. Okay? You'll find good ground. You'll find sometimes bad ground. But keep keep sowing the word. Amen. Keep sowing the word. Amen? Yes. Amen? Let's move on to Mark chapter 5. We're still introducing the beginning of Jesus' ministry in those first three years. Mark chapter 5 is amazing. Let me just tell you what happens. Three major accounts happen in Mark chapter 5. It won't be up here. I'll just tell you about them. Mark chapter 5, you have the account of the man who was possessed with a legion of demons. Legion means many. And this man slept in graveyards, and he cut himself. Okay? This man slept in graveyards, and he cut himself. The city was terrified of him. Okay? Can you imagine having to go bury a loved one and just knowing that you're going to see this man probably running around naked, sleeping there, dirty, cutting himself, and you're trying to bury a loved one? He's terrorizing the city, this man is. Oh! But Jesus cast out the demons and sent them into a herd of pigs, about 2,000 swine. The demons ran into the swine. And they ran violently down a steep hill into the sea, and they were drowned. That's the first account we see in Mark chapter 5. Jesus casts out the demons, the legion of demons, out of the man who slept in the graveyards and cut himself. Remember this man. He's important because he'll show up again when Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a colt. Remember him. Okay, I'll remind you when the time comes. Remember him, because in a few months, this man's going to show up again. Also in Mark chapter 5, the second account is of the woman with a bleeding issue. How many years? Twelve years, that's right. Twelve years. And she was able to just touch the hem of Jesus' garment as he passed by. And what happened? She was healed, amen? Just by touching the hem of his garment. Amen. Remember her. She's also very important. She's going to show up again in a few months when Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey or on a colt. So will you remember her also? Remember her, the woman with an issue of blood. This is the third account in Mark chapter 5. The account of a 12-year-old daughter of one of the rulers of the synagogue. 
being brought back to life. Woo! Your 12-year-old is dead, and Jesus brings her back to life. Yes. You know, it's interesting, that story. If you read about it, when you go home tonight, read Mark chapter 5. Just familiarize with it, yourself with it. The friends of the family were mourning her death, but when Jesus said, she's not dead, y'all, that's right, she's just asleep. What did they do? These same friends that were mourning, they started laughing. How rude. They started laughing and scoffing Jesus right in front of the grieving parents. They start laughing because Jesus said, she's only asleep. So Jesus said, all right, out, leave. I don't want to do my work around scoffers. So he sent them out of the house, and he raised this girl from the dead. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Almighty God. I wonder if they remained friends with the ruler of the synagogue after his daughter was raised. I wonder if the ruler wanted to be friends with them after they were scoffing the one who raised his daughter from the dead. People will surround you and support you, church, while you are needy and desperate and down and out. But the moment there's a glimmer of hope in your life, a little bit of success, a little bit of victory, they begin to laugh and discourage because they like you better when you're down and out. People don't like to see you succeed. That's why this is your family. Because the family of God will rejoice when you rejoice. Lord, They'll God. cry when Hallelujah. you cry. They'll hurt when you hurt. Praise and when something good happens in your life, we celebrate it. Amen. 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 So that's all of Mark chapter 5, those three accounts. So moving on to Mark chapter 6. We're doing very well with time. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 6, verses 4 and 5. Jesus explains why he left Nazareth in order to have his ministry. Jesus was speaking and some people started questioning, is this Jesus, the son of the carpenter from Nazareth? No big deal, that guy, Jesus, we know him. Verse 4, Mark 6, verse 4 and 5, Jesus said unto them, a prophet is without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his house. Wow. And he could there do no mighty work, except that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk, and he healed them. Most of the time, we have to leave our loved ones and get out of our comfort zone, that place we call home, in order to have a ministry. Back home, nobody takes us seriously. Back home, he was just Jesus, the son of a carpenter. No big deal. So if you find yourself struggling to witness to your family, you're in good company. Just pray and ask God to send someone to them. Amen. And you need to move on. That's what Jesus did. He moved on. He got up and out of Nazareth because he couldn't have a ministry there. Because he was just the son of a carpenter in, in, the, in, in their eyes. I often tell this story. Uh, uh, just even a month ago, uh, Mom and I were sitting at a table uh, with some people down south in, uh, in uh, the Brazos Valley area. And they said, Brother AJ, Will you sing something for us? Will you sing a couple of songs for us? I said, right here? At the table? Yes, please. Will you sing a couple of songs? We just would love to hear your voice. That's never happened in Denver when I go see my family. That's right. That's never happened. When I used to sing opera, Brother AJ, can you, can you, they didn't say brother. Hey, AJ, can you uh, do the solo on this, on this, on this song that, you know, this opera that we're doing. That's never happened with my family in Colorado. I'm just AJ. I'm just AJ. Sometimes you have to leave to have a ministry or to be taken seriously. It happened to Jesus. It's going to happen to us. Amen. Amen? Amen. That's right. 
So verse 4 and 5, he explains why he had to leave Nazareth to have his ministry. This is all relevant because we're talking about the first three years of Jesus' ministry. He had to leave Nazareth, then he got baptized, and then he went into the wilderness for how many days? Forty. Forty. Amen. And he fasted, and he prayed, and he was tempted by Satan, and then he uh, left, and he started calling disciples, and they left their businesses and their livelihood, and they followed without hesitation. Are we together? Amen. Amen. And along the way, he's healing, he's casting out demons. Amen. 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 And then they say, hey, your mom and your brothers just showed up. He said, I'm looking at my family. Amen. Those who do the will of God, that's my family. Oh, my God. Amen. Amen. Oh, and why, why did you leave Nazareth? Because a prophet is without honor in his own country. Amen. I only was able to lay on hands on a few people and heal them. But other than that, I couldn't have much of a ministry there. Amen. Still in Mark chapter 6, verse 7 through 13, this is where Jesus sends out his disciples. Are we together? Yes. Amen. And he says this to his disciples in Mark 6. Let's look at it, verse 7 through 13. And he called, unto, uh, he called unto him the twelve and began to send them forth by two. Two by two. Why? Because if Dale's up underneath uh, an, an engine working on a car and he needs a wrench or a pair of pliers, isn't it nicer for somebody else to be there to hand them yeah. to him instead of having to come all the way up out from underneath there, find the wrench, get all the way back up underneath the car. Two by two is better yeah. because they help you. You're accountable to them. Nobody can blame Dale for anything because he had a witness standing there <laughs> with him. Amen. Two by two is better. Amen? That's right. And if one falls, hallelujah, you have somebody to help you up. Amen. 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 He sent them out two by two and gave them power over unclean spirits. Verse 8, commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey. What? What? Commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey except the staff. Okay, something to lean on, something to help you walk when you're weary. Amen? Amen. But don't take a script. Don't take any bread. Don't take any money in your purse. Only sandals on your feet. And do not take two coats. Don't overburden yourself. Don't take two coats. No money, no food. Why? Why? Verse 10. He said unto them, In what place wheresoever you enter into that house, there abide until you depart from that place. And whoever shall not receive you, nor hear you, when you depart from there, shake off the dust from under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. <laughs> Church, Here's my interpretation, and if it's wrong, text me, call me, correct me, ask the Lord to send someone to rebuke me. But Jesus tells them to take only the sandals on their feet and the staff to lean on whenever they're weary. Tells them to take no money and no food, not even an extra coat. Why? Jesus tells his disciples that wherever they minister, people should take care of them right. and meet their needs. Amen. And if people don't take care of their minister, the minister should move on. Shake the dust off of their feet as a testimony against them. This is happening. A lot of ministers are coming to the end of their own resources and having to shake the dust off, close the doors to the church, and move on because they're not being well taken care of. I said well taken care of. I said, well taken care of. Do you know that I represent you? Yes. Do you know that I represent you? Yes. And if I roll up, all tore up in every way, it's going to be a really poor representation of cross life. Yes. How long will I endure that? How long should a minister endure that? Jesus said, not very long at all. If they don't receive you, 
If they don't take care of you because you didn't bring money, you didn't bring food, you're not wearing an extra coat because the people that you minister to should take care of you. And if they don't, shake the dust off of your feet and move on. Move on. He didn't say hang out for several years and wait to see if they finally get it and start to kick in gear and take care of you. Wow. He's sending them out to minister. He's protecting them because he wants them two by two. Amen? That's for your protection. Amen? That's good. Amen? Amen. And uh, uh, don't take anything extra with you. You'll be taken care of by the people you minister to. And then, in this chapter, the third thing that happens, the first thing that happens is he explained why he left Nazareth. The second thing, he sends them out two by two and tells them, people will take care of you as you minister. If they don't, you need to move on. And the third thing that happens in Mark chapter 6 is the uh, account of the young lad with the five barley loaves of bread and two fishes. This story is told in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All four of the Gospels tell the story of this young man's lunch I can't believe that there's like 15,000 or more people here. It says 5,000 men, not counting the women and the children. So there's well over 15,000. And there's only one young boy that brought a lunch? What? (laughs) Only one? And he didn't even pack it. He had a good mother that said, you're going to go here, Jesus, let me pack you a lunch. (laughs) That boy's lunch fed over 15,000 people. That also happened in Mark chapter 6. And I want you to remember that young lad because he's going to show up again in a few months when Jesus rides in to Jerusalem on a colt. He'll be there with the woman who had the issue of blood. Remember her? Yes. Mm-hmm. He'll be there with the demon-possessed man who was delivered, who slept Amen. in the tombs and cut himself. He'll be there. Amen. Remember them. And the, the 12-year-old daughter of the, uh, of the uh, leader of the synagogue who was raised from the dead, she'll be there, okay? Remember these people. We're going to be talking about them in the future. So now we move on to the last chapter of today. Amen. <laughs> Mark chapter 7, verses 1 through 37. We're going to look at verses 1 through 23. Are you ready? This is where the Pharisees questioned Jesus. Why his disciples were breaking the Jewish law by not washing their hands before they eat. Okay? Let me just say, of course we believe in washing our hands before we eat. But think about why we do that. Why do we do that? Well, one, it's to stay healthy. Okay? It's good. And the second reason... I like to wash my hands before I eat is to show thankfulness and respect for the provision which God has provided for our nourishment and for our enjoyment. It's just a a way to show thanks, amen, and respect and honor. You know, uh, in America, we have this thing, for those of you that might be watching on social media, I grew up, we we used to have food fights. I thought that was normal. (laughs) I thought that was normal. I hope nobody's watching from Liberty University, but I started the first food fight that they had on campus at Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia. And it was spaghetti night. Okay? Spaghetti sauce and dinner rolls and and spaghetti noodles everywhere. Everywhere. And, and, And I thought food fights were just something that we do. They're fun. We grew up having food fights now and then. You know, as I traveled around the world, Brother Alex, I found out that that's not a good thing at all. Because so many people don't have something to eat. And you definitely aren't going to throw food. You're going to respect it. Eat what you can. Save some for later. All my young disciples in Peru, all of them only eat about half of their food. Sometimes only a third of it and take the rest home to share with their family. Mm -hmm. 
Every time I would take them for pizza or chicken or anything, they would eat a portion of it and take the rest to go for their brothers or sisters at home. It was precious. Every meal was precious. Every meal was precious. So, why do we wash our hands? Well, it's good to wash our hands to stay healthy, but it's also good to wash your hands out of respect and thanks for this provision, Amen. for this wonderful provision. Amen. Food is a celebration of life, and it's a reminder that great is his faithfulness. Amen. Great is his faithfulness. Amen. Amen. Great is his faithfulness. But the Jews, the Pharisees, were upset because the, the Jesus' disciples didn't wash their hands, but they weren't they weren't upset because for that same reason. The Pharisees thought washing your hands actually made you more holy. But Jesus is quick to remind them that that's not where your holiness comes from, the washing of your hands. Let's read a little bit of this. Mark chapter 7, 1 through 23. Let me just look at this. Uh, Verse 13, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like uh, things did you do. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, hearken unto me, every one of you. Every now and then I'll say, are we together? Are we together? That's what Jesus did. He said, hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand, there is nothing from without a man outside outside of our body that enters into him that can defile him Amen. but the things which come out of him those are they that defile the man Amen. that same verse is repeated in Matthew chapter 15 verse 11 if you want that as a cross-reference. Matthew 15, 11, and also 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, also say the same thing. And 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 12. The word defiled there is a Hebrew word it means to pollute or to stain. There's nothing from without the body that can pollute or stain the man. But what comes out of his mouth, that's what pollutes you or defiles you. And then he says, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Okay? Okay. So Jesus is saying, it's not what you put in your mouth that's going to defile you. Be very careful that you understand defile, okay? Because there are some things we should not do, okay? Especially in excess. All things in moderation, amen? Amen. But to defile something, okay, uh, that's a whole lot different than just making something unhealthy. Okay, and so uh, the Pharisees, like I said, they thought washing your hands actually made you more holy. Jesus is quick to remind them that it's not what goes into the body that makes a person defiled. Why? Because what a person thinks in their heart, that's what comes out of your mouth. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 34. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's Matthew 12, 34. Our words reveal our character. Amen. So, after he rebuked the disciples and set them straight and let them know it's not what goes into your mouth but what comes out of your mouth, then Jesus moves on. Moves on, and that brings us to chapter 8, which takes us to next week. 
So, as they say on TV, to be continued. It might seem like an awkward place to end, but this is the first three years of Jesus' ministry. To be continued. You come back next week, bring somebody with you, church, and we'll talk about the last six months, the other half of the three and a half years of Jesus' ministry. Amen? Amen. 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 Are we blessed? Amen. Are we getting a foundation, an understanding? Amen. Already we know how the ministry started, where he came from, why he left there, how he started his ministry, and what happened along the way. Next week, we will talk about the last six months of his ministry. And then on Palm Sunday, we'll talk about the last six days and the last six hours which were on the cross. Amen. The last six days of Jesus' ministry, <clears throat> you're going to find that Jesus controlled and orchestrated every detail of the last six days of his ministry and his life on earth. Why? Because he had a mission to fulfill. Glory he had to make sure it was fulfilled so every detail had to be controlled so it didn't get out of hand. Or get off track. Okay? Or go awry, as they say. Amen. So now we have a good understanding of the ministry, the first three years. I hope you'll come back to hear about the last six months, the other half of the year. Amen. And uh, of that ministry. And then on Palm Sunday, like I said, the last six days and the last six hours on the cross. That'll be on Palm Sunday. And we'll take communion. Amen. 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 Will you stand with me as we pray? And as we pray, I'm going to ask you to also contemplate in your heart what the Lord would have you to give to this ministry, to take care of it. Amen. Give generously in Jesus' name if you are able. We're going to pray, and then we'll have our time of giving, tithing. Then we're going to have sweet fellowship today by the grace of God. Amen. I encourage you today. He says, come unto me, all you that are weary, tired, heavy, late, burdened, preoccupied in your mind, concerned about this or that, come unto me, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Praise God. Father, we're so thankful that you have become our Sabbath. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our rest is found in you, not yes, in the Lord. day of the week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, you, Hallelujah. You, Thank you, Lord, that you have become our Sabbath. Yes. Our healer, our helper, our deliverer, our shield, and our defender. The self-existent God, hallelujah, who sustains our life and our breath, hallelujah. Sustainer of this ministry and this church, Cross Life Family Worship. Father, thank you for those who have watched us today, joined us by social media who were not physically able to be with us in this place of worship today. But they joined us, hallelujah. We pray that soon you would make a way for many of them to be able to join us. If not next week, then soon for Palm Sunday and even for the Resurrection Sunday Easter celebration. Father, we're thankful for your presence in our midst. Be glorified, Father, in our conversation today, in the offering that we're about to receive, Lord. I pray that you're blessed by it. I pray that you're pleased by it, Lord. Obedience is far better than sacrifice. Amen. So let us be obedient to you, yes. Father, the author and the finisher of our faith, Amen. the Alpha Amen. and the Omega. Yes. We love you, Lord. We appreciate you, Father. And great is thy faithfulness. Yes. We praise you for all of this in the powerful and healing name of Jesus Christ. And the whole church said, Amen. Amen. Amen, Amen. 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 Amen.